To thee we come, O Lord our God. Examination of your conscience. For penance, for the confession that you have made, I ask that for the next three nights, besides saying your evening prayers before retiring, also, please read the Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ and reflect upon its message. And now, let us recite the second act of confession. I confess to Almighty God, one in the Holy Trinity, in the presence of the Blessed Virgin Mary, all the saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, that I have sinned in thought, word, and deed, by my fault, by my fault, by my own great fault. I ask the Blessed Mother Mary, all the saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy upon us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to life everlasting. Amen. May the Almighty and merciful Lord grant us pardon, absolution, and remission of our sins. Amen. May our Lord Jesus Christ absolve you, and with his authority vested in me by him, I absolve you of your sins. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. O God, you will again renew us. Show us your mercy, Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Take away our sins from us, O Lord, so that we may enter the Holy of Holies with purified hearts through Christ our Lord. Amen. To you we owe our hymn of praise, O God on Zion. To you our vows must be fulfilled. You who hears our prayers, to you all flesh must come with its burden of wicked deeds. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Glory to God in the highest and peace to his people on earth. Lord God, heavenly King, almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, 
Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. Receive our prayer. For you alone are the Holy One. You alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Almighty Father, may we not presume to be righteous in your sight. Grant us the grace of humility that we may serve you faithfully in our lives. And at the long last entered through the narrow gate into your kingdom, we ask this through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. John, would you proclaim the word? A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. Thus says the Lord, I know their works and their thoughts, and I come to gather nations of every language. They shall come and see my glory. I will set a sign among them. From them I will send fugitives to the nations, to Tarshish, Put, and Lud, Mosach, Tubal, and Javan, to the distant coastlands that have never heard of my fame or seen my glory. And they shall proclaim my glory among the nations. They shall bring all your brothers and sisters from all the nations as an offering to the Lord on horses and in chariots, in carts, upon mules and dromedaries, to Jerusalem, my holy mountain, says the Lord, just as the Israelites bring their offering to the house of the Lord in clean vessels. Some of these I will take as priests and Levites, says the Lord. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Go out to all the world and tell the good news. Go out to all the world and tell the good news. Praise the Lord, all you nations. Glorify him, all, your, all you peoples. Go out to all the world and tell the good news. For steadfast is his kindness towards us, and the fidelity of the Lord endures forever. Go out to all the world and tell the good news. A reading from the letter of St. Paul the Apostle to the Hebrews. Brothers and sisters, you have forgotten the exhortation addressed to you as children. My son, do not disdain the discipline of the Lord or lose heart when reproved by him. For whom the Lord loves, he disciplines. He scourges every son he acknowledges. Endure your trials as discipline. God treats you as sons. For what son is there whom his father does not discipline? At the time, all discipline seems a cause not for joy, but for pain. Yet later, it brings the peaceful fruit of righteousness to those who are trained by it. So strengthen your drooping hands and your weak knees. Make straight paths for your feet, that what is lame may not be disjointed, but healed. The word of the Lord. Thank you. Thank you. Alleluia, alleluia. Alleluia, alleluia. I am the gate. Whoever enters through me will be saved. Alleluia, alleluia. Almighty and eternal God, who cleanse the lips of the prophet Isaiah with a burning coal, cleanse my heart and my lips through your gracious mercy, that I may worthily proclaim your holy gospel through Christ our Lord. Amen. May the Lord be in my heart and on my lips that I may worthily proclaim his holy gospel. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. A reading from the 
Holy Gospel according to St. Luke. Jesus passed through towns and villages, teaching as he went and making his way to Jerusalem. Someone asked him, Lord, will only a few people be saved? He answered them, strive to enter through the narrow gate. For many, I tell you, will attempt to enter, but will not be strong enough. After the master of the house has arisen and locked the door, then will you stand outside with knocking and saying, Lord, open the door for us. He will say to you in reply, I do not know where you are from. And you will say, we ate and drank in your company and you taught in our streets. Then he will say to you, I do not know where you are from. Depart from me, all you evildoers. And there will be wailing and grinding of teeth when you see Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, and all the prophets in the kingdom of God, and you yourselves cast out. And people will come from the east and the west, and from the north and the south, and will recline at table in the kingdom of God. For behold, some are last who will be first, and some are first who will be last. This is the gospel of the Lord. May the name of Jesus Christ be praised by all of us now and forevermore. Amen. Nick Benjamin Jesus Christus. Amen. Truly, truly I say to you, he who does not enter the sheepfold by the door but climbs in another way, that man is a thief and robber. These words are taken from the Gospel according to St. John. I am the gate. Whoever enters by me will be saved and will come in and go out and find pasture. Words also taken from the Gospel according to St. John, chapter 10, verse 9. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. To you, my dear brothers and sisters in Christ Jesus. In not only the Gospel that we read today, but also in the Gospel of St. John, Jesus, is refer, Jesus refers to himself as the gate, the gatekeeper. In the bulletin that was prepared, I spoke about Jesus, who is the gatekeeper of our souls. What is a gatekeeper? It is defined as an attendant at a gate who is employed to control who goes through it. Also, it is a person that controls access to something. You know, there are no words that I can actually find to give as great of an exhortation that our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ gave as recorded by John the beloved disciple. But I'd like to share with you some of the words that are found in the Gospel of John where Jesus talks about gates. He says, Verily, truly, I tell you, anyone who does not enter the sheepfold by the gate but climbs in another way is a thief and a bandit. The one who enters in by the gate 
is the shepherd of the sheep. The gatekeeper opens the gate for him, and the sheep hear his voice. He calls out his own sheep by name and leads them out. What more do we need to know? Our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ offered his body as the perfect sacrifice on that first Good Friday. And by offering that perfect sacrifice, as we read in St. Paul, letters to the Hebrew, he offered once and for all the appeasement by which God accepted that sacrifice. In Hebrew, Hebrews, we hear where every single year there was a high priest that was appointed to offer the atonement for his people, which is also what we call Yom Kippur. But Jesus, the lamb without spot or blemish, and which we recite during the liturgy of the hours, he who knew no sin was made sin for us. He offered himself on the cross, and by offering himself on the cross, he became the gate. You know, through our life, we don't know how long, how many years, how many months, weeks, days, hours, minutes, or even seconds, because it could all change. And we read where Jesus talks about, in a spiritual way, you don't know what time the bridegroom is going to appear. And so, my brothers and sisters, the gate is Jesus Christ. We are his sheep. And if we listen very closely, we hear that inner voice that speaks to us. Know that I am God. I've repeated several times about that conversation that took place at the Last Supper where Philip, one of his disciples, says, Lord, show us the Father, and that will be enough for us. And what did Jesus say? Have I been with you all this time, and yet you do not know me? For I say unto you, who have, whosoever has seen the Father has seen me. Jesus would also go on to say, the Father and I are one. In the Gospel of John, Jesus says to them again, I tell you, I am the gate for the sheep. Whoever enters by me will be saved and will come in and go out and find pasture. One of the most beloved psalms that we find in Holy Scripture is the Lord's Psalm, or also known as the Shepherd's Psalm. And how does it, be, how does it begin? The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside the still waters. He restores my soul. You know, there are so many different gates that we've heard over the years. You know, back in the 70s, there was the infamous water gate, a break-in that took place and caused President Richard Nixon to actually leave office. And there are so many other gates in the Old Testament that were gates that were used for security that people could not just freely walk into a city or a town. They had to go through a gate. We know of other gates that have taken place during World War II when the Nazis decided to close off the Jewish ghettos. You could only access through one gate. And so there was a way in which they controlled the population of who could come in and who could leave. Jesus, in a spiritual way, is the gate of our souls. There was a conversation that took place where Thomas said to the Lord after the Lord's ex exhortation, he said, Lord, we don't know where you are going, so how can we know the way? And what did Jesus say? Say unto Thomas, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes unto the Father but through me. Jesus, the begotten one, through his death, resurrection, and ascension, would be the firstborn of many. 
He was to become the Lamb, whose blood made all things possible for us to return back to that Edenic state. And what is that Edenic state? Those of you who know a little of Scripture, all you need to do is to go into the book of Genesis. What happened with the fall of Adam and Eve? They were cast out, and there was a seraphim that was placed to guard so that no one could enter back into that Garden of Eden. That was the first book of Holy Scripture. Revelation, the last book, the gate is open by which we can go back to that Edenic state. And what is that Edenic state? It is such as the glorified body of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, who his disciples saw following his own resurrection. That is the glorified body by which we will enter the kingdom of heaven. Jesus, the firstborn of many. And Jesus also refers that those who are begotten by God are also those who will share in the kingdom. And so the question is asked during today's gospel and also by each and every single one of us. Lord, will only a few people be saved? That's where we come across and we call Jesus not only the Regenerator, the Redeemer, but the Savior. The Savior by which we may become one with the Father, as Jesus proclaimed at the Last Supper in his prayer unto the Father. And what did he pray? That they all may be one, even as thou, Father, art in me and I in you, that they may be perfectly one. And so, my dear brothers and sisters, we are given direction and instruction by our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, and we're called upon not to take it just at face value, but to search our hearts and our souls, because is that not what we are truly striving for, the salvation? Is there anyone else who can offer us that salvation? Is there anyone of us that can offer each other eternal life. It is only in our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. And so he says, strive to enter through the narrow gate. For many, I tell you, will attempt to enter but will not be strong enough. In conclusion, as we know in life, nothing comes easy. When you decide to follow Jesus, it doesn't mean that everything is now going to be perfect. You will still have trials, you'll still have tribulations, you'll still endure hard times, sicknesses, death of loved ones, and finally one's own death. And so, to be a Christian does not come overnight. Your commitment to Christ takes place at that time that you ask Him to come into your heart. But for the rest of your days, it is a daily battle of seeking the Lord and living by the teachings by which He has given to us. It takes commitment. It takes dedication. But if we strive to enter to our own salvation through the narrow gate, it is through God's help, which we call grace, and the power of the Holy Spirit that we are promised by our Lord and Savior to not only be saved, but also to inherit eternal life in Him. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. May the name of our Lord Jesus Christ be praised by all of us, now and forevermore. Amen. Niech będzie po Fulonii Jezus Chrystus.
why he, he leaves his walk upon God, the Father of the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, the God and not made of one being with the Father, through him all things remain. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he was born of the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified on your conscience, Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in fulfillment of the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord and giver of life, who proceeds from the Father. With the Father, the Son, he is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one, holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. I acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. I look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Here we are. We now come to you because you are the Lord, our God. may truly be accepted by God, our Heavenly Father. Amen. Let us pray. Receive this oblation, Father, and grant that your church throughout the world, together with the church in heaven, may offer up one sacrifice of thanksgiving to the glory of your name. We ask this through our Lord. Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. The Lord 
be with you. thanks unto the Lord our God. It is right to give Him thanks and praise. Father, a powerful and ever-living God, we do well always and everywhere to give you thanks through your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. It is out of love you have called us to who life. You give us our daily bread and the bread of life. And by your protection and assistance, you see to our every need. And so with trust, we commend this day to your fatherly care. Therefore, we join with the voices of angels and archangels with all the saints and the entire church, and we lift our hymn of praise to your glory, repeating unceasingly. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and mind, heaven and earth are full of your glory. O Son and the Heights, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. O Son and the Heights, please be seated. Most merciful Father, we most humbly pray and ask you through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, to accept and to bless these gifts, these presents, these holy and spotless sacrifices, which we offer to you in the first place for your holy Catholic Church, that you would guide it in peace, defense, and unity throughout the whole world with its bishops and priests, especially Anthony, our prime bishop, and Paul, our bishop, and all who profess the true Orthodox and Catholic faith, which comes to us from the apostles. Remember your servants, O Lord. My brothers and sisters, in our prayers, let us pray for the sick, the suffering and the dying, the hungry, the homeless, and the unemployed, all those who are suffering from the coronavirus, in its variance and pray for not only their health but for the well-being of their families let us give our thanks to God for the blessings of doctors nurses first responders and health care workers who strive daily to save others in our deepest prayers today let us pray for all abused and neglected children as well as all abused and neglected animals, for all victims of violence, especially in keeping in our prayers the people of Ukraine and other spots around the world who seek justice and righteousness. Let us in our prayers pray for all those who serve in our armed forces, that the hand of Almighty God may watch over them and that with his blessings of his divine angels would protect and return them safely to their families. And for all other intentions which we offer, and for all here present whose faith and devotion are known to you, for whom we offer or who offer up to you, the sacrifice of praise for themselves and all their own, for their hope of salvation and deliverance and free who freely choose to serve you, the living, eternal, and true God, we join in communion with and honor above all others the memory of Mary, the glorious Virgin Mother of our Lord and God, Jesus Christ, also your blessed apostles, martyrs, and confessors, together with all the countless number of saintly men and women of all nations, but especially of our nation, who lived, suffered, and died for the glory of your name and the coming of your kingdom. May the remembrance of these praiseworthy people encourage us to follow their heroic example, making us worthy of your grace and love. Through the same Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. We ask you, Lord, to graciously accept our offering of that of your whole family, 
And so order our days in your peace, that we may be saved from spiritual damnation and count among the flock of your chosen people through Christ our Lord. Amen. O oh God, we ask you to bless, to accept, and to confirm this offering and make it pleasing unto yourself, so that it may be filled with the power of the Holy Spirit and become for us the body and the blood of your most beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. The day before his suffering and death, in order to manifest his infinite love to his disciples and through them to all who would believe in him, to fill the hearts of his followers with the fire of this love, draw them to himself, make them joyful and save them, he instituted these holy mysteries in which spiritually and bodily in his entire being he again lives among his people. At that solemn moment, so sacred for the whole human family, our Savior took bread into his holy and venerable hands, and having lifted his eyes to heaven to you, God, his almighty Father, and giving thanks to you, he blessed it, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat it, for this is my body, which is given for you. In like manner, after supper, taking this excellent chalice into his holy and venerable hands, again giving thanks to you, he blessed it, broke it, blessed it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the cup of my blood, the blood of the new and everlasting covenant, which shall be shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. As often as you do this, do it in remembrance of me. Therefore, in remembrance of this Christ, your Son, our Lord, in his blessed passion, resurrection, and his glorious ascension, we, your servants and faithful people, offer to your divine majesty from your own gifts and presence a pure offering, a holy offering, an immaculate offering, the holy bread of eternal life and the chalice of everlasting salvation. Be pleased to regard these offerings with favor and joy and accept them as you receive the gifts of your just servant, Abel, the sacrifice of our patriarch Abraham, and that which our high priest Melchizedek offered you a holy sacrifice and a man host. We humbly ask you, Almighty God, command that this offering be brought by the hands of your holy angel to your high altar into the presence of your divine majesty. That we, who receive the most sacred body and blood of your Son from this altar, may be filled with every blessing and grace through the same Christ our Lord. Amen. Lord, remember your servants and handmaidens who have gone before us with the Son of Faith and now sleep in peace. To these souls, Lord, and all the rest in Christ, grant we pray a place of refreshment, light, and peace through the same Christ our Lord. Amen. And grant us, your sinful servants, who hope in the greatness of your mercy, so part in fellowship with your holy apostles and martyrs, and all your saints who shed their blood for your name, their hearts are always open to justice and mercy, and with lives patterned after their divine master, merit and eternal joy. Number us in their company, Lord, not weighing our merits, but pardoning our offenses through Christ our Lord. Amen. By whom you always create, sanctify, revive, bless, and freely give us all these good things through him, with him, in him. All honor and glory are yours, almighty Father, in the unity with the Holy Spirit. Forever and ever. Let us pray, instructed by our Savior's teaching, uh, and following the divine example, we say with confidence, 
what shall I return unto the Lord for all the graces he hath rendered unto me? I will take the chalice of salvation and I will call upon the name of the Lord. With high praise will I call upon him and I shall be saved from all my enemies. May the blood of our Lord Jesus Christ preserve my soul unto life everlasting. Amen. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Lord, receive the body.
Lo, I am about to create new heaven and a new earth. The things of the past shall not be remembered or come to mind. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Almighty eternal God, may we who have been fed at the banquet of life serve you and others before ourselves. Therefore, advancing in perfection from day to day on our journey to your kingdom, we ask this through the same Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit in our one God, forever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you. Sacrifice is offered. Thanks be to God. May the tribute of our worship be pleasing to you, most holy Trinity, and grant that the sacrifice which we go and worthy have offered up into the sight of your majesty be accept acceptable to you. Through your mercy may be effective for ourselves and all those for whom we have offered it. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. May the Almighty and merciful God bless you. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also A reading from the Holy Gospel according to St. John. Glory to you, Lord. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was in God's presence, and the Word was God. He was present to God in the beginning. Through him all things came into being, and apart from him nothing came to be. Whatever came to be in him found life, life for the light of men. The light shines on in the darkness, a darkness that did not overcome it. There was a man named John sent by God who came as a witness to testify to the light, so that through him all might believe, but only to testify to the light, for he himself was not the light. The real light which gives light to every man who is coming into the world. He was in the world, and through him the world was made, yet the world did not know who he was. To his own he came, yet his own did not accept him. Any who did accept him, he empowered to become children of God. These are they who believe in his name, who were begotten not by blood, nor by carnal desire, nor by man's willing it, but by God. The Word became flesh and made his dwelling among us, and we have seen his glory, the glory of an only Son coming from the Father, filled with enduring love. Thanks to God. Thank you. 